tell you about viral search today. I think you were maybe promised at lunch that you would see your B score, uh, which will not actually happen. Here. But you can you can search for your for yourself uh, in these stories. The idea is that this is a tool to actually look at how content spreads online. And so right now, most of what's available lets you just see how popular content becomes. Uh, and this gives you insight into actually how that content becomes popular, how it passes from one person to the next, and so on and so forth. So, you know, people have this idea of what it means for content to go viral um, in their head, uh, but I think it's, it's not been well defined. So, sort of scientifically, we've done some pioneering work in actually looking at what it means for content to go viral. And uh, to give you a sort of uh, little contrast here, we'll look at two pieces of content and how they spread differently. They're both very popular, but they actually spread in a different way. So here's a story, a form story about Jeremy Glenn and the power of social media. Um, and, uh, here we have the Forbes Twitter account actually tweeting this initially. And they have about a million followers. And these are people who directly follow Forbes. And so about a hundred of them actually end up adopting. Um, and so this is sort of the first generation of adopters. And then the story pretty much doesn't go much further. So it becomes popular, but it doesn't spread in a way that people think it's a viral type of thing being passed on to one person. So contrast that with this, which is a cover of the Gautier uh, Walk of the Earth, which people may or may not have seen. Um, and so this actually has a very different structure. It starts off with the same type of large broadcast, because uh, Gautier has a pretty large following. So this ends up going about 20 generations. We can zoom in and take a look. And so here, Gautier has about 300,000 followers. They get a big uptake, but the thing continues to propagate from generation to generation. And so this structure, just visually looking at it, is quite distinct from the other structures that we see. And so we've developed a mechanism by which we can actually score these things to say this content is more viral than uh, the sort of traditional broadcast style content that goes directly from a large outlet to a bunch of individuals. And so we can also come up here and take a look at all trees for this story. So now that structure you were just looking at for each uh, dot in the, in the tree is a person tweeting the story. Uh, here we're looking at many different versions of that story started by different individuals. So if you think of them kind of as family trees, they each have a, a different initial person who starts the tree, uh, and then it, it continues to propagate. So here's uh, the actual band who made the video, Walk of the Earth. Um, and here's the tree we were looking at, uh, the tree by Gautier. The size shows you the popularity, the concentric shaded ring shows you the number of generations through these things propagate through. Uh, and so we can see there's actually a lot of diversity for one story. You can see that many different instances actually spread by different people. This is the story showing up in all these places? Yeah, that's right. So this is the story being started by different individuals. So in other words, none of their friends have previously posted it. They come along and post the story, and then friends of theirs go on and post the story through many generations. Um, and so I should point out two things here. One is that people have been pretty interested in looking at word of mouth and how things spread for quite a while, but haven't had the data to actually piece together things like that. Right, so just having data where you can actually track a mention of a URL and you know who listens to you is you know something that a platform like Twitter offers us. The other thing is that uh, you're looking at Twitter here, or you're also looking at Facebook. We're just looking at Twitter here, but we can integrate other platforms. Um, so things tend to spread a little bit on Twitter than they would on Facebook. And, uh, absolutely. So that, that's something you can certainly explore here with the types of methods. Um, but the other thing is that doing this at scale is actually also pretty challenging. Right. So we have billions of relationships between individuals, um, and every day are hundreds of billions, hundreds of billions of tweets, right? And so actually doing this systematically at scale and being able to sort through these things requires a reasonable amount of computational power. Um, so we can also go ahead and not just look at stories, but uh, Matt, since you asked a question, I'll pick on you. Um, so we can go ahead. On the spot. We can go ahead and look at all the stories you've actually posted. Right, and so these are all the popular news stories on a restricted set of uh, news, video, and image domains that you've posted over the last about a year and a half. Uh, and so we can go ahead and actually look at each one of these instead of representing a different start of the same story represents a different story. Um, again, the size is popularity. The uh, shading is the number of generations. And then the concentric the circle here shows you uh, basically where you fall on this tree, so how far out in terms of generations you are. And so we can see this Hurricane Sandy story. Um, we can take a look at uh, this 
people remember this fresh from yeah. the guy if you were in fresh from review. Um, and then we can go ahead and actually look at any of these and uh, we can see where you appear who was involved in these cascades. So this will take just a moment. Um, right, but this structure is quite different even than the other structure we've seen there. So we have a way of systematically uh, ranking these things and sort of exposing content which is not just popular but also popular. So, so does it follow that the people who are most valuable are the ones in the middle of the circle? Um, well, I mean, I think it's all up to interpretation, but those are the people who have uh, adopted earlier on in the process. Um, so what's the takeaway after you look at this, and if you're a reporter, yeah. and you want to understand what makes something go viral in the way that you want to versus not? Uh, right, so you could imagine using a tool like this where, let's say, you actually wanted to experiment and try a bunch of variations on your story. Um, and you could go ahead and use this as an outcome to measure. Right? So we can actually, yeah, so you might modify headlines and you can measure something like this virality score and this popularity score and look at how treatments actually affect it. What's the percentage of the virality? Like, so what is it, 50% viral versus 100% viral? How are you assessing percentage? Like, what's the percentage of? Yeah, so we look systematically at over a year of content and we actually look at this score and I can tell you about this score. So the idea here is you look at this tree, you have a sense that it looks different than the broadcast I showed you initially. Um, when you look at the average distance between all people on your tree, uh, this gives you a good measure of how viral that thing is. In a broadcast, right, most people are two hops away because they just go through the source to get to each other. In this, you've got to go quite far away. So 100% viral in this case means... What, what it means is that we've looked at this full year, we've measured this number from all of the billion trees that we've seen, and this pretty much falls in the extreme of the most... I think it's percentile. It's percentile, yeah.